Sinai West, and I'm also the hospital epidemiologist at Mount Sinai West. So in terms of getting together for the holidays, obviously everybody is, I think this year, really looking forward to it a lot more because of the year that we've had and the need to keep our distance. Um, unfortunately, like with the rest of the year, the safest thing to do is to do a virtual gathering um, because most of the holidays that we look forward to are going to be in colder weather and being able to meet outdoors, especially in uh, the area that we live in, is gonna be a little cold and uncomfortable. Um, and so it is really safest to do it um, virtually. There are people who, you know, aren't looking forward to that idea and have sort of come up with some plans on maybe how to, how to meet uh, in person. But in terms of the safest option, um, unfortunately, the safest thing to do is, is to not do it in person. So the most important thing with that is, is that, that um, everybody is taking precautions outside of the gathering, right? So if you, um, if you yourself are you know, very careful about masking and about washing your hands, um, if you say are working from home and you're really not having a whole lot of other outside um, activities or outside engagement with other people, your risk for getting sick is going to be lower and you're going to really want to think about the people coming into your home having a similar risk profile to yours or to your gathering to have a similar risk profile to yours. Um, I think, you know, most of us are in different places with how comfortable we are about uh, meeting people. Uh, we're in different places about how comfortable we are about maybe going to the grocery store or maybe getting things delivered. And you're just going to want to know that the people who you've invited to your gathering are in a similar risk group to you um, because it kind of defeats the purpose for you to be super careful and then invite somebody who is going out um, you know to a lot of events who maybe is going to a bunch of different parties so in order to keep your risks uh, similar to theirs it's a good idea to ask about things like that if you don't already know so if somebody does make a choice to get together in person um, the most important thing would be to try to do it outside, if at all feasible. But again, with you know the weather um, being what it is in, in the tri-state area for Thanksgiving and for so the winter holidays, um, that's a little tough to do. So you know, if possible to do outdoors, that would be preferable. Um, you also want to keep it you know relatively brief, which again kind of goes against what we all think about as as being the way that we want to keep our holidays uh, celebrated and enjoy them. Um, but unfortunately, you know, the longer you're with a bigger group of people, the more chance you have of possibly getting sick. Um, you want to keep the numbers small. So unfortunately, this isn't really a time for the really, really large extended family gatherings. This is a better time to think about keeping the group smaller. Um, if you have to be indoors, then the thing that you can do to help yourself the most is to make sure that the space is well ventilated. So unfortunately, not very environmentally friendly, but think about opening up windows, um, think about making sure that there's, you know, good airflow, um, specifically with fresh air coming in. And I would really encourage that if you absolutely are going to do this indoors, that you do wear masks for as much of the gathering as possible. Again, that feels really strange, right? You're inviting, I don't know, a sister, a parent, whatever to your house there's that sort of familiarity and it feels a little strange to ask people to put on a mask, but in this situation, it would make it a safer situation. And again, preferably you want to be outside, but if, if you do insist on doing it indoors, you want ventilation and you really want masks and if possible, keep people separated as well when they eat. So there's a lot of questions about what happens um, with using testing as sort of maybe like a permission slip to go ahead and, and to meet. Um, testing is a little bit difficult to do uh, to really sort of get an idea of what, um, what your potential in, in infectivity is. So if you test before you have one of these gatherings, um, it's, helpful if, it's helpful if someone comes back with a positive test result, because then you know for sure that person should be excluded from the gathering. It's not so helpful when somebody is negative because it doesn't give you an idea of their potential to possibly turn positive in the next day or the next two days. So for example, if I test myself um, today and I get my result back tomorrow and I'm supposed to go to my family gathering tomorrow, today's test result doesn't tell me what my test result is gonna to be tomorrow, 
or the day after. And if I happen to start getting symptoms the day after tomorrow, everybody who I met at that family gathering, um, you know, uh, tomorrow is going to have to quarantine. So while it might be nice for me to say, okay, great, so I know I don't have COVID today, I go to this party tomorrow, by the day after, if I'm sick, that test from today doesn't really help any of those people because they're all going to get called by test and trace and they're all going to be told to quarantine. So unfortunately, I think the test is giving people a false sense of security. And I do think a lot of people are really misusing the test in that way. It, it's, again, it's helpful if it's positive, but it's not quite so helpful if it's negative. Um, kind of think as a society, we've gotten used to having tests where the test gives you a definitive answer. You know, am I pregnant? Yes or no. Um, do I have HIV? Yes or no. Um, so we're used to that kind of, you know, test and that type of an answer. And even those, obviously you have to take them in the right context, right? Um, you don't always expect that you're going to be pregnant. So taking a test at a time when you couldn't possibly be pregnant would sort of be a useless use of the test. Um, and similarly to this, we have to understand how we're using the test and what we're doing with the information. And so I think it's important for people to understand that a positive test result in that setting is helpful, but a negative one, I think, only gives a false sense of security. And you really should continue to take all those precautionary steps, regardless of what your, your test result is, and specifically if your test result is, is negative. Because if it's positive, you know what you should be doing. You should be isolating at home and taking care of yourself until you're feeling better. So following any of these gatherings, if again, if somebody chooses to do it indoors, um, the thing that you really want to do afterwards is to try to keep the distance from other people in the two weeks after that gathering to limit the potential that you could potentially get anyone else exposed. So again, if you go to one of these family gatherings and two days after the gathering, someone calls and says, you know, I just tested positive for COVID. Um, you're going to have to quarantine. If for those two days you've kept to yourself, um, you're not going to be so worried about then having to call, you know, somebody at work or another friend that you saw after the gathering to tell them that they also now might have a reason to be concerned because you yourself were exposed. So um, it is best after those types of gatherings to try to, you know, keep to yourself, um, to try to limit any, you know, I guess collateral damage for anyone else possibly getting exposed. Whether it's indoors or outdoors, I want to think about how the food is being served. Um, you don't really want to do a buffet style kind of thing because you don't want a whole lot of people handling all the utensils. So, you know, there's been two different ways that people have sort of suggested that you can do this. The first is like everybody brings their own, which frankly for like something like Thanksgiving doesn't really work because you'll have a whole lot of food left over. But um, the other way to sort of do it is to have one person serving everybody. Um, and again, that person should be masked, their hands should be clean before they touch any you know, utensils. But then if they serve everybody, then you don't have all the different family members touching you know, the tongs, touching a spoon, touching you know, a fork. Um, and that does help a little bit with, with minimizing um, at least you know, that contact. And again, when you're sitting and eating, you should try to distance people by six feet if possible, because that is the time when they are going to remove their mask. And you want to make sure that you have adequate distancing for that. More space is better, but, you know, again, being that we live in, in and around the New York area, space is limited. Um, we don't always have the luxury of having all that space to space out a, a gathering. And, um, you know, at least if you can get six feet, that would be, that would be ideal. So um, there have always been questions about what to do in terms of um, the, the plates and the, and the spoons and things and, and forks that people are using. Um, the benefit of something that is disposable, again, although it's not environmentally friendly, is that you then don't have to have one person who's touching plates where there's going to be saliva, where there is, you know, higher potential that you're going to come in contact with, you know, not just um, not just COVID, but you can come in touch with any other, um, you know, respiratory illness. So the nice thing is that, you know, potentially you're decreasing the chance that somebody is handling that. But, um, you know, I would hope that whoever is doing dishes is also, I mean, obviously their hands are going to be, you know, sudsy or at least wet if they're putting them in the dishwasher. I would hope that that person is actually taking the time to wash their hands when they're finished. Um, and in that case, their risk really isn't going to be much different than anyone else's. Um, but I guess people are, 
thinking about ways to reduce that risk and, and certainly if someone wanted to use all disposable plates and, and cutlery that that could help.